back to another week. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to go ahead and stand up on your feet. And let's go ahead and stretch it out. Reach to the sky. Reach down low. And begin with... ready to go, let's go ahead and begin our lesson and pick up with our series, Story Time! Today, we're going to be talking about a boy named Joseph. <laughs> Joseph was only 17 years old, but who is he? Where did he come from? I'm so glad you asked. Let's review what we learned last week. It all began when God made a promise to a man named Abraham that he would turn him into a great nation and that he would have many sons and daughters, as many as the stars in the sky. This nation began when Abraham had his promised son Isaac, who had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob had 12 sons and his youngest was named Joseph, who we will be talking about today. So Joseph had 12 brothers and he was his father's favorite. Now, parents, I would not recommend having a favorite child, but Jacob did it and it made all of his brothers hate him. But on top of that, Joseph was having dreams. Now, how many of you know that God can actually speak to you through your dreams? Um, excuse me, last night um, I had a dream that I turned into a piece of fried chicken and then a squirrel ate me. So do you think that God's trying to tell me that I'm gonna be eaten by a squirrel? No, that kinda just sounds like a weird one. But Joseph was having dreams that he knew were from God. And he would talk about them a little too much. But I don't wanna spoil the story for you. So let's go ahead and read it for ourselves. Joseph was one of Jacob's 12 sons. Jacob loved him more than all his other sons. Jacob made Joseph a colorful robe. His brothers were jealous. They wanted nice robes too, and they wanted to be loved as much as Joseph was loved. Joseph had a dream. He told his family, we were bundling grain from the field, your bundles of grain bowed down to mine. Then Joseph had another dream. He said, this time, the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. His father asked, Does this mean our family will bow down to you someday? The brothers were even more angry. They threw Joseph into a dry well. Along came some traders. The brothers sold Joseph to them as a slave. They lied to their father and said Joseph had been killed by a wild animal. But God was with Joseph. So Joseph's father makes him a special coat full of colors and only gives it to Joseph. Hey everyone, it's me, Joseph. Oh, this, yeah, dad just made this just for me, a special colorful outfit. And so all of his brothers see it and they get really jealous. Did dad make you one of those? No, he make you one? No, he didn't make me one either. Imagine your parents bought the best gift for one of your siblings and didn't give it to you. How would that make you feel? So Joseph is having some pretty big dreams. People are bowing down to him and he's getting really excited about what's to come. By the way, I had some dreams last night where you guys are all gonna worship me. We gotta get rid of this guy. But when God puts a dream in your heart, you can do one of two things. One, you can choose to be humble and submit it to God, trusting that He will make a way. Or you can be boastful, telling everyone you know how cool you are, how God's gonna use you, and what you saw in your dream. So say it with me, I will choose humility over pride. Now, unfortunately, Joseph did not choose humility over pride, which made his brothers very upset so much so that they begin to plot to kill him. Let's kill him. Okay, I need you guys to look at me in the eyes here. I don't care how mad your siblings make you, do not ever plot to kill them. If I was one of Joseph's brothers, I would be pretty angry too. But just like Joseph, they had a choice. They could choose anger or choose to love him anyways. So say with me, 
I will choose love over anger. I will choose love over anger. But unfortunately, they did not do that. And they began to plot, how can we kill Joseph? One of the brothers stands up and is like, no, we shouldn't kill him, that's too far. Instead, let's just throw him in a ditch. <laughs> Again, no matter how mad your siblings make you, don't throw them into a pit. Better yet, let's sell him. Are you kidding me? They didn't stop there? The brothers take Joseph and they sell him into slavery. His own brothers. One last time, I don't care how mad they make you, don't sell them into slavery. You know, dude, I think we maybe took that too far. Things are not looking good. How can God ever fulfill these dreams he gave to Joseph if he's in slavery? Well, let's head back in to hear our main point for the day. Alrighty guys, now you may think that the story is over, but here's something you need to know. In God's story, God always wins. So if the story is not good, the story is not over. The story is over for today though, because we're going to pick up with the life of Joseph next week. But here's what you need to take away. Our main point for the day, what the enemy means for evil, God will use for good. What the enemy means for evil, God will use for good. And you guys are going to keep finding this out as the story moves on. Remember last week, our main point was, my God will always keep his promises. And God gave Joseph a dream and he was going to keep his promise. It just may not look like what Joseph thought it would. Let's go ahead and read our memory verse for the day, which comes straight out of the story of Joseph. All right, let's read Genesis 50 verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is being done, the saving of many lives. This is Joseph speaking to his brother. So sorry for the spoiler. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. What the enemy means for evil, God will turn to good. Let's take a sneak peek at what we're going to learn about Joseph next week. Next week in the life of Joseph, Joseph is in prison. He interprets the king's dreams. All of his brothers come back. Yes, all this and more in the story of Joseph. Tune in next week. So some pretty crazy stuff is coming up. You guys are going to want to make sure you come back next week to hear the rest of Joseph's story. Because you're going to have dreams that God is going to place in your heart. And people may judge you. They may think you sound crazy. Now, hopefully nobody tries to sell you or put you in prison or anything like that. But the enemy will try to stop your dreams. But God is always in control. And God will always keep his promises. And God always gives the victory. Remember, in God's story, if the story is not good, then it's not over. So let's review our main point for the day. What the enemy means for evil, God will use for good. He will use every bad thing that has happened in your life for good. So when you feel like, God, where are you? What about the promises you made to me? Know that he is going to turn it around. And that deserves a break.